Start by creating a new ArchiCAD blank canvas. Make sure you use ArchiCAD default template. Then from here, we're going to start by loading a classification system of your choice that addresses your original standards. And this information can be accessed from the Graphisoft website. If you scroll down here, they offer different types of systems for different regions. Go down and download 2010 CSI Uniformat for the sake of this course. Then go back to the ArchiCAD and open the Classification Manager from Option Menu, then Classification. ArchiCAD by default comes with the system. Let's go down below and import our own system. Hit on Import, then locate it on the folder, then Open, and hit OK. Let's select the ArchiCAD system and delete it to remain with one system. You can use multiple system if you want, but for the sake of this course, we're just going to use one. In every system, elements are grouped by their categories in folders. You can expand these categories to access detailed elements classes with their coding system. Go ahead and hit on OK to complete the loading of the classification system. The next session of this class is the layer systems. Let's open options menu and element attributes, then layer system or layer settings, sorry. In this window, we're going to scrap off everything and create our own layer system. Start with the layer combination and select everything. Make sure you remain with one layer combination. Do the same to the layers and make sure you leave architect layer and hidden layer. Select the 2D draft in general, scroll down and with hold shift click to select all and delete. Make sure you move elements into ArchiCAD layer. These are 2D information like um, elevation markers in a floor plane. Go back to the layer combination and rename the combination to 01 construction. That's what we are going to work on during the course of this module and create a new layers under this construction layer combination. The layers that we are going to work on or use um, in this session. Start with walls, then create another layer for roof truss or roof trusses. Then here, these are the list of layers that we are going to use in this module. So you can pause this video and create um, all these layers. Let's go for roof um, slab, another layer for floor drain, another layer for plumbing fixtures. We have fire equipment and annotations, then the room label. Then from here, we need to set up this layer and put them into some categories or into groups. So for an example, a B wall or a wall is under a superstructure um, category or group. So we we'll use a layer extension to group these layers. This, um, you can also stretch the window to fit in the content like that. Like I said, um, we're going to use a layer extension to group these elements. And this should address the coding system for the classification system. As you can see here, we need to copy this coding and uh, mirror it into our layers. So go back to the layers and do that. So for the walls, it's going to be B superstructure. Fire equipment is going to be under D services. And then floor drain is under B superstructure. B superstructure. And this information, it can be it can be copy paste in similar layers. Then paste. Plumbing fixtures or oh, paste in roof finish, roof pair lines, and roof trusses. Then for room label, it's we're going to use a zone two. Oh, but it's a 2D information. Let's just say 2D. We'll give it a layer extension of 2D. Plumbing fixture is going to be D services. Annotations is going to be annotations for superstructure. Perfect. This is what you want for your layer system. Let's mirror the coding system to the naming of our layers as well. You need to understand that you need a good system because as your project is 
populating with object you have to have we're going to have difficulties on selecting and managing your layers hence you need a very good system so from here once you've created make sure you select all the layers and make them visible under construction layer combination you can check except the hidden layer make sure you update you update the changes so that it can be permanently visible there we go i think everything looks perfect we can now hit ok to save these changes the next session is construction view if you go to the project navigator there is the second project map which is the view map this gives us a platform to create views and organize these views into folders go down below and create a folder for architecture in this folder we're going to put everything that is existing here in the view map hit ok then select everything drag and drop these elements into this folder let's move close it and move it to the top there perfect let's create another folder for our own construction elements call it construction and hit ok close bring it down below and close off the architecture let's save a view select the folder and save the current view and set the layer combination to construction and the scale to 1 is 200 so from here let's override the name of this put it in custom and give it a construction um, name construction with uppercase construction plan and save you can stretch this um, window if you select the view there is uh, properties of this view as you can see the id the naming and the layer combination together with the scale so let's go to the file under info project info this is where we key in any data that is related to project that's where we manage that information it's very very important guys i can't emphasize this more so this is where you can key in the project details which is uh, the project name for this example the name of this project is the commercial kitchen the des description is create better project documentation i think go ahead and fill in all the parameters for all the fields for this um project so you can in also fill in the contact of you as a company or as an individual uh, there we go the company name the company um, address and everything like i said i can't emphasize more onto this guys it's very key to managing any information that is related to your project so as you can see there's a lot of information that is supposed to be keyed in a project as you can see go ahead and do that guys just spend time and fill in everything as much as possible we came to the last session of this class um, let's select all the markers on the floor plan just drag in that and open the settings you can also hit ctrl t a shortcut command let's assign this a layer i think let's give it a oh, annotation for yeah annotation for superstructure then move up to the marker section let's change the marker size to anything between 15 and uh, or let's say 20 20 millimeters then set the marker pen to color one and move down to marker text style and set the text pen to color one as well then move down again under the marker symbol text let's change the marker style to circle three and let's get rid of the background by using an airspace fill we don't want to have a background so you can click on the forward page here is where you can um, decide what kind of information you want them to show in your markers 
so let's hit ok there we go perfect but we have a we have a problem here we just want to have the coding and the number of the mark go down to the go up to the info box under with the marker reference to let's use the first place drawing of the viewpoint there we go and let's rotate the text to be horizontal for only vertical markers select the vertical markers and open its settings and let's move the window this side if you move back to this page under marker text rotation keep it always horizontal then there we go nice and clean i like them traditional so yeah 